Hello, testing. So you can hear me? Good. Okay. Um, so, uh, very good afternoon to all of you. So, welcome to um, School Computing. Since I'm a staff here, so this is my home ground. So, it's actually uh, my duty to actually welcome you. Um, so, I'm very happy to be actually the first speaker in my uh, session. Uh, not only because I can actually get it over with, uh, but also when I actually look at the presenter after me, I'm very glad that I, I start first. Uh, because I don't have the pressure on me, right? so this is actually just a friendly way to uh, push the pressure to my esteemed colleague later on in my session. Uh, Alright, so uh, without further ado, let me just uh, briefly introduce myself. Right? So my name is Yuan Jen, uh, you can just call me YJ, or as my students or my colleagues call me Uncle Su, uh, because I'm, I'm very uncleish, I guess. Right? Um, so we are actually the developer of this uh, system known as uh, Archipelago. Right? So let me see whether I can get this work. Oops. So, yeah. So uh, this name actually means uh, a series of connected uh, little islands, uh, and hopefully after this presentation you will know why I actually picked this name, right? Other than the fact that it actually start from A, so you pop up in the first right in searching, I guess. All right, all right. Um, so I guess all of us are here because we are interested uh, in teaching, right? So most of us are actually teachers in uh, one form or the other. Uh, I guess all of us know that uh, uh, dealing with a small class right, is actually quite easy and very enjoyable. Right? For example, this is actually pushing the limit of small class. Uh, but after a while, you can actually remember the names of your uh, students. Right? You can call them by name, right? Stephen, right? Damif, and all that. Right? Then you actually can interact with them. Right? But imagine you actually scale this up into a typical scenario in School of Computing, uh, where we actually can have class with uh, 200 or more students. Then when you actually stand in front of the podium, you stare out, you actually see a sea of faces looking at you, uh, and you have a hard time to actually interact with them, right? Especially if you enjoy tutorial and so on. Uh, sometimes it's really tempted to ask them, okay, uh, do you have a question? But you don't really expect them to answer because it's very hard for them to pose any kind of uh, real question to you. Uh, it's very hard for you to actually answer them in actually a meaningful way, right? So this is actually uh, a very uh, common fact, right? That uh, if you want to interact with a large class, it's very, very hard, right? So of course, this is a well-known problem, right? There are many, many uh, solutions uh, that attempt to solve this problem, right? So for example, a very common one is actually the hardware clicker, uh, where you actually uh, distribute a hardware device right, to all the students in at once. Uh, then you actually pose some kind of questions in the lecture. Uh, they will be able to click on it, right, and then give you a response on the spot. Uh, but you realize this one has uh, its own problem. Right? First of all, it's actually very expensive. Right? Uh, as the instructor, you, it's your uh, responsibility to distribute it to all the students, uh, and actually it's your responsibility to actually collect it back right, uh, at the end. Uh, from what I know, right, at least in school or competing or in NUS, if you lose one of these, it's actually $250. Right, on your bill, right? So uh, that is actually a very scary prospect, right? Especially for someone that's uh, very absent-minded, right, like me, right? So uh, this uh, hardware clicker, right, uh, also has another shortcoming, right? In a sense that it sort of uh, only allows a certain kind of question to be posed, right? Most of them will be just MCQ because you actually have uh, the, just a number of limited choices, right? So you can see that um, the hardware clicker does have uh, its uh, attractiveness, right? but these are actually the, all the uh, drawbacks that I mentioned. Right? It takes time for you to set up. Uh, that you cannot possibly, possibly uh, equip this with every class. Uh, you actually have limited form of interactions. Right? Then um, in uh, NUS, we actually have another uh, technology that we actually developed, uh, which is actually using a, a SMS. Right? So all the students' phone number is actually registered uh, in our portal. So they actually can use the phone, right? send an SMS to you, Right, uh, which you actually set up in at once, then you know which student actually responded, right, uh, and then you actually can give them feedback and things like that. Right? But again, uh, this one has its own uh, set of uh, drawbacks. Uh, first of all, it doesn't encourage peer-to-peer -peer interaction. Right? They will just click on their phone. Uh, it takes time for you to set up a separate uh, uh, SMS code and so on. It takes time for you to do collation later on. And uh, the last uh, point, right, which is actually the sh uh, shared problem, with a hardware clicker is that it actually only provides a limited form of uh, interaction, right? So there are other software that actually look into this problem, uh, and we are one of those, I guess, right? Uh, essentially, the problem now you actually face is that all the students, right, you can consider yourself as a student, they are now stranded on their island, 
right? They hide behind their screens. I, I'm sorry to say, all of you actually have a screen in front of you. Uh, when you say something, they will start Googling, they will start actually Facebook, right? They will actually start Wiki, right? PDA or Neil, and to check every sentence you say, which I find that that's actually quite uh, invigorating, right? meaning that you have to be on your toe all the time. Uh, but you cannot feel that there's actually a disconnection right, from them. Okay? So the students, uh, unfortunately, are stranded on island. Right? So now, it's actually just uh, a, thinking, a thinking of a way right, to solve this problem right, uh, so that they are no longer stranded on their island. Right? We want to bring them together. Right? So that is why we have this uh, system right, called Archipelago, uh, which basically means uh, uh, a series right, of little islands. Right? They're connected in certain pattern. Uh, and that's why we actually choose this name, right? So essentially, this system allows a very simple uh, idea, right? So instructor will be able to interact with the students, right? Uh, formed in groups, whether it's individual or a num uh, certain number. And we set up a web-based system that actually allows them to uh, do interaction, right? With the instructor in many, many forms. Right? So this uh, essentially what Archipelago is, right? It's a web-based uh, interaction system right, for big classes. Right? So what the instructor need to do is uh, rather straightforward in a sense. Right? You basically have to set up a virtual classroom right, in advance. You can set certain parameters. For example, you say, okay, in this class, uh, you only allow a group of three students maximum. Right? Uh, then you set all these parameters in advance. Right? You set up your questions and things like that. Then the system will actually deal with the rest. Right? Then students, when they actually come in, they will be able to use uh, the system using any kind of device that is capable of browsing net. Right? Because it's web-based, your handphone, your tablet, your laptops, right? all of them will be able to be used. And they will just join the class, right? forming their own teams, and you can now uh, start the uh, lecture in proper. Right? And this is the point where uh, the actual fun will start. Okay. So once you actually set this up, you can do any kinds of uh, interaction that you actually uh, allows by the system. Right? Uh, and uh, instead of just telling you about it, uh, I will actually show you how it actually can be uh, done. Right? So let me just uh, do this. Uh, by the way, I need to apologize in once. I'm a Mac idiot, right? so I don't know how to operate a Mac. Right? So later you will see me fumbling around and things like that. Okay? Right? So this is actually our system. Right? We call it Archipelago. Uh, and as an instructor, I will first uh, log in. Right, uh, okay, right. So when you go into the system, uh, essentially you just need to set up courses. Right, uh, for example, when you create a new course, right, so these are the information you need to uh, fill in. Uh, in this case, uh, I have set up a course called Technology. Uh, for teaching at scale. Right, so this is the course. And I have taken the liberty to actually register all of you as the students. Right? So if I uh, look at the students, right, they are, you're now somewhere inside. Right? So you need to do this once right, to, for every class. Right? So all the students are pre-registered in, inside the course. Then for every course, you can actually set a number of sessions. Right? Session actually represent the actual interaction session with the student. For example, a lecture, uh, a tutorial, a recitation, or things like that. Right, so you can create a new session right here. And again, uh, to facilitate this particular uh, demo, I have uh, already set this up. Right, so today we are looking at here. Right, so this is actually the demo. Right? So in the demo, you, uh, in, in a particular session, you can actually set up a number of questions in advance. Right, the type of question that you want to pose to the student uh, during your lecture or during your tutorial. Uh, you can actually set up a different kind of question, which I actually show you later on. Right? Uh, after you set this up, right, you go to the actual lecture and then you can actually deploy the system. Right? What the student will receive from you is actually an email with a link inside, right, which I think you actually received this mysterious email yesterday night when I was setting up this, uh, this whole thing. Uh, most of you actually deleted it because it looks very like a spam, right, which I understand right, perfectly. Uh, but uh, I need to, uh, again, apologize in advance right, because we are in the middle of migrating a system, so we turn off uh, external access, so you need to be in NUS network in, in order to access it. Right, so uh, unfortunately for our visitor, you, you won't be able to do it in this session, uh, which uh, will be opened up after a few weeks' time right, because we are in the middle of a system integration. Right? Um, okay, so uh, I hope some of you will be able to at least assess it, right? And then we'll see whether uh, I I have one here. Uh, 
And okay, let me just show you what happened next. All right, so this is the session that's bought. Right, uh, and here you will see exactly who is online right now. Right, uh, I'm YJ. Uh, this is my phone, but I've just logged in here. Right, uh, Steven just logged in. Right, uh, I'll click there. Uh, where you are my student, uh, Ben, over there, right? You know exactly who is online, who is offline at any point in time. If they close off the browser, you will see them go offline. Uh, and uh, as a uh, demo, I will find my own link right here, uh, which is, where is it? Okay, so this is me. Okay, so this is my view as a student, right? So when you go in, you will actually see yourself and you will be able to form groups right, with any of, of your classmates. Then from there onward, you are one unit right, that you actually can respond together right, for any questions that your uh, instructor actually posts. Right? So right now you can see that there's no open question for you. Right? Then uh, as the instructor, what you will do next is uh, uh, at the right time in your lecture, you will be able to open up a particular question. Right? So here I'll open this question, which all the students will now see. Right? So there's a uh, which weekday is the best, right? So MCQ, right? So uh, the answer will be Monday, right? Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, right? As a shock, and Friday period, right? So that is actually the five choice. So all of you, all the students can actually try whether they want it. Uh, since today is uh, Tuesday, right? So I choose it, right? Uh, then on the instructor side, uh, what they will see is a real time uh, bar chart, right? From all the students' responses. Uh, and if you want to be cheeky, right, you can actually say, okay, Ben, why do you say Wednesday and things like that, right? So you can see the responses given by the student, and from there, you can use it as a, a guide right, to your next topic in the lecture or things like that. Uh, so that's actually the first type of question, my right? MCQ, very straightforward. Uh, and we have uh, other type of question, which I will show you right away. Um, that, uh, okay, which one is, is this? Ah, okay. Then... Uh, now, this is actually an open-ended question, right? Which asks a very important question that's on our mind these few days, right? What do you think is the cause of the haze? Right, I will open the question, right, that all the students will now uh, get an uh, open uh, question that they can type, right? So, for example, they can say, oh, maybe it's fireworks, right? Uh, and uh, we'll see how creative our friends are, right? So, this is a word cloud. Uh, that I will see what's the frequency of the answers right, right away, right, <laughs> right, and so on. Right? Uh, this is actually weighted by the number of responses. Right? So in a group of five, if they all weighted, it's because of a barbecue or whatever, then you will actually see this uh, as a real response uh, right away. Okay? Right, so this is actually the... Wow. Okay? Uh, that is actually the next uh, type of question. Uh, I'm not sure whether I should close it or you want to have more fun, and then I'll let you just play with this. Uh, okay, so this is a second type of question, right? So the third type is actually picture based, uh, where you actually will uh, uh, give all the all the students right a picture for them to click on, right? So for example, uh, you ask them, okay, uh, at this point in time, which of the following character best describe your mental state? Right, so I, I hope you have watched this uh, movie, right? You know this actually represents joy, sadness, right? Angry, right? Disgust. And uh, this one, I'm not sure, right? Giddiness, maybe, okay? Right, so if you open the question, uh, what the student will see uh, essentially will be the same picture on their handphone or whatever, they can click anywhere they want. All right, so uh, I can click, I'm now uh, very angry, um, then I submit, right? Then uh, as the instructor, what you can do is you can group, right? You can se select a points. Right? For example, you can see several points in this right? and here. Uh, you can, of course, select the colors that you want to reflect, right? For example, here, uh, probably you want to choose uh, some color other than black, right, in order to see the points uh, uh, clearly. Uh, and for a more serious application, right, you can imagine that they're plugging in um, a circuit diagram or whatever and say, okay, if I apply this current here, which uh, is the part that blows up and things like that, right? So you can actually ask the student uh, this type of question. Uh, and you have the next type, which actually allows the student to um, uh, match, uh, sequence, right, rank uh, a number of steps. For example, uh, this one, right, how do we actually prepare instant noodles, right, what is the correct steps? You open up the question, uh, then they will be able to uh, rank this, right, so uh, you should probably 
place noodle in water and you boil water right, and so on uh, okay right, so uh, after they actually selected the uh, sequences uh, then uh, as the instructor right, uh, you will see uh, the sequence they have chosen right three two one four and so on right oh so all of you know how to cook instant noodles all right so this is the sequence kind of question and uh, on the same type of question you actually can uh, instead choose to rank them right by the weights uh, of the choice right for example if uh, all of the uh, participant consistently weight something uh, as the second most important or whatever right you can also uh, read that one right that's actually the highest weight here Right, so uh, for example, this one actually means uh, this is actually consistently the uh, higher uh, ranking uh, choice. Right, so it depends on what kind of question you are asking. Then one of these graphs will be actually a closer match, right, to what you actually need. Right, so for example, I will uh, open up the last question, right, which asks, uh, what is the more important activities? What is the importance of the following activities to you right now? Right, then here you will see some interesting thoughts of our colleagues here. Right, which one do you think? Do they think it's more important? Is it sleeping, working, family time, or leisure? Mm. Right? Do we have a work-life balance or whatever? Right? So you see, everyone say work is more important. <laughs> All right, so this is something we need to do about it. Uh, we, we need to do something about this. All right, but uh, this is essentially what we actually have uh, right now right, as the system capabilities. Uh, we have the MCQ, right? we have the free-form question, we have uh, the picture base, and finally this ranking question, which you can use in uh, multiple ways. Right. Okay, so now I'll go back uh, to my uh, presentation. Right. So that is actually the fun that you can have with your class. Uh, we have deployed this in a class of 250 students uh, with 150 students actually there, right? although 250 students actually registered. Right? So this, again, is a common problem. Uh, but at least uh, the, the 150 students feel that they at least have some way uh, to influence where the lecture is actually going. Right. Uh, we actually post question, they reply, and then from their answer, we explain what is a common misunderstanding, right, and then proceed from there and things like that. Right. So there are uh, many, many uh, possibilities that we are currently exploring. Right. For example, a very obvious choice would be to add more kind of questions. Right. For example, allow the student to draw, right, or allow the student to uh, piece a puzzle together and things like that. Right. So these are the things that uh, we are currently doing. Uh, when we are actually doing system migration right, in order to open it up right, uh, to the public right, so that more actually can uh, try their hand on this right? so uh, the mission that we actually set up to achieve right, is to connect the students that are stranded on different uh, little islands and uh, I think our system right, can be the link to actually put them right, together and connect together right? it actually allows them to uh, interact with their peers I talk to each other, they actually allow uh, their voice to be heard right, by the instructor during the class. Right, so that uh, is essentially uh, what we actually have. Right, mm. So that's very quick, I think less than 15 minutes. Uh, I have some uh, feedback uh, from the course uh, that if you're interested, I can show you uh, right now. Uh, so this is actually what uh, the students say right, uh, after we uh, deployed it in the course. So uh, we asked them whether the, this system actually facilitates interaction. Right? So 78% of them actually agree, uh, and then about 20% neutral or disagree. Right? So this is actually the uh, uh, in-session feedback. Then at the end of the semester, I received this very uh, happy message. Right? They say uh, the use of this system in one lecture make the lecture really fun and exciting. Uh, and I have the... Um, um, Crazy uh, nurse, right? To actually ask my peer reviewer to sit in that session to peer review my teaching at the same time. So I'm again very happy that they they don't feel the system is uh, useless, right? They uh, find that the student seems to be engaged, right? And uh, finally, the other reviewer wrote this big chunk of uh, text, which somehow exited the box. Right? Uh, it says the class size is big, right? And the lecture hall is huge, right? And they were not expecting. Uh, much student engagement, which is actually a typical case right, when you have a big class. Uh, but we actually managed to surprise the reviewer by using the system right, because it's, it does seem to break the boundary. Right, so that's uh, all we have. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, a few minutes for questions. Yes. Is there a limit to the number of students per class? Uh, 
right now the system side, right, we actually managed uh, to, to add 200 uh, to 300 students. So there shouldn't be a problem, but uh, one possibility, uh, possible bot for that would be the Wi-Fi connection in the lecture theater. Right, uh, which uh, we haven't actually reached that limit yet, but it could be a real bottleneck. Like if all of them using a uh, handphone at the same time, it could be the case that they cannot connect at, at the same time. But we haven't actually encountered that yet. Right, uh, for the 150 student case. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Um, as of today, is, is there a possibility to share what you gather during the class with the students, or the students only ask ah, the questions? Uh, thank you. I, I actually forgot to show that. Uh, because we hope to use this as a way for the student to review what they have learned. So at the end of the session, uh, if you close all the uh, session, uh, let me see whether I can find it. Um, uh, you will be able to generate a report right, for every student. So they will receive in their email saying, these are the questions asked during the day. These are the answers that you are given. And then hopefully help them to uh, revise what they have learned. But also what the peers have uh uh, that we haven't added in, right? So it's mostly the student answer and then the lecturer's answer. Okay, but uh, I think uh, given the uh, the peer answer may be a good idea also. Yeah. yeah. Do you mean the same yeah. kind of report that you can show, like yeah. the same graphs, for example? Uh, we are probably uh, right now we only provide them with text, right? So but graph will be something that can add, I guess. Right. So yeah. Uh. Uh, it's actually generated by the uh, lecturer at the end of the session. Right. Right. Yes. Any plan to integrate into IDLE? Uh, it's actually integrated in the sense that uh, you can log in via IVLE. You actually retrieve all your courses, uh, and then you will actually add all the students into this right, without manually adding them. That's all right. Right. But it cannot be accessed directly from IVLE at the moment. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yes. What if the students want to ask questions rather than? Uh, yeah, uh, that is a next type of question type that we want to implement. Uh, something like the pigeonhole, I'm not sure whether you're aware of it. The student can type in questions. The other can view all, what are the questions proposed by their peers, and then they can upvote it. Right? So you can imagine you run it during the lecture break. Right? Then after the lecture break, you see which one is the highest burning question, right? then you answer that. Right? So that is actually in the pipeline, but it's not implemented yet. Uh, actually, this is location oblivious. I'm not sure whether you take it as a good or bad point. In a sense that the student or the lecturer need not be in the same room. Right? They can actually be at, at home. Then they actually uh, just answer questions as you open them. Right? So if there's no restriction on that. Right? So they don't detect the location of the, uh, any of the participants. So they seem to take attendance for students. No, no. <laughs> they, 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 they can be outside. <laughs> uh, okay, right. well, uh, okay. I think